Welcome to Live Daf, your online Daf Yomi Shir. Shalom and welcome to today's Daf Yomi. Need the Daf Mhei. I'm going to a couple of lines from the top. The Mishnah mentioned that Tashmish with an Isha who is less than three years old is not considered a proper Ma'asabiyah. It is compared to one who merely pokes his finger into his eye, which is only a temporary phenomenon. It doesn't have any permanent lasting effect. We know that an Isha has a membrane called Psulim, which gets damaged during the Ma'asabiyah and produces dam. Now the fact that an Isha who is less than three years old is not considered a masabiyah would seem to indicate that her psulim aren't fully developed. These psulim of an isha who is less than three years old, mezel azli asu, do they go and come? Meaning they're present, they're there. Theoretically, they would produce dam if they were damaged. However, they're so flexible that they can go and then come back and they regrow. Or perhaps, they're not fully developed and they do not get captured. It's Sudi's Elashon of Tzeda, they do not get captured, meaning they do not get damaged and removed until she would be three years old. What difference does it make? Kegoin, for instance, Shabal Basach Gimel. If he was boiled under less than three years old, Umatzadam, and he found them, Ubal Achar Sholesh Vilay Matzadam. Then again, he went ahead and repeated after she was three years old. At this time, he did not find any dam. So the question remains like this. I amers mezel azliva asu. On the tzad, that the psulim are there, and they do produce dam. However, they go, and they come, and they regrow later. So perhaps there wasn't enough time for the psulim to come back again. Shehu sudalei havilu. There was no time for them, to, for them to, to regrow, and therefore, there was no dam present the second time he was boiled. Meaning the first time he was boiled when she was under three years old, the dam that, that was produced was actually dam besulim. But being that the besulim weren't fully developed yet, they disappeared and then they regrew later. They were about to regrow, but they, they didn't have enough time. They didn't have enough time to come back since he kept on being boiled, as Rashi says. Amris, but if you say it's that they're never fully developed until after she's three years old, and therefore the fact that he's being boiled after three years old is an indication that somebody else was mizana with her because the first vila before she turned three would not have removed the psulim since they weren't fully developed according to this tzad of the Gemara. So the Gemara according to the tzad of Eloi Mitzadi Allah Gimel Ha Acher Bo Aleha The fact that there is an absence of dam when he is boiled after three would indicate that there was a znosir. My. So what is the conclusion? So again the Gemara is a shayla by an Isha who is less than three years old whose psalm is not, are not fully developed, the question remains, what does that mean? They don't produce any dam, or they do produce dam, but they will go and come back and regrow later. They have the ability to regrow. And the question is, in a case where he was boiled before Gimel, he found dam. Evidently that came from the psalm. But then it went, he went ahead again and, and repeated after Shalish, after she turned three years old, and he did not find any dam. The question remains, according to the tzad of Mezel Azli Asu, you would assume that they simply hadn't had a chance to grow back. But according to the tzad of Tzudi Loi Mitzah, that they don't get removed to begin with if it's under three years old, so meaning the fact that there's no Basulim now cannot be a result of his first Bi'ila. That wouldn't have done anything to the Basulim, but rather is indication that she was Mizana. Maskafla of Chiyah Breda Ravika. Who says the Gimel You're making an assumption. You're saying that according to the Tzad, the Mezil Azli Asu, although they got damaged and they can they have the ability to come back, however, there wasn't enough time to give them a chance to grow back. So therefore it's not a simon of znus. Who says maybe they, they're meant to come back immediately? And the fact that they weren't present during the second vila would indicate that there was a znus. Otherwise, they should have been present since they grow back very quickly. Shem achazeres la'alter. Perhaps they come back immediately. Vahal. In this case, that he did not find any dam besulim. Acher ba'alel. It would be a simen. It would be a riot that somebody else was mazana with her. So therefore, in this uh, aforementioned case, there is no nafkemina between both svaras. Ela abat will present a different case 
which in that case there will be a nafkamina between the two stadim. Nafkamina, what is the difference? Kegon Shabbat Betzach Gimel. He was boy when she was younger than three. Umatzadam, and he did find dam. Then Uba Laachar Gimel Umatzadam. So in both cases he fa- he found dam. There was dam present during his beila before three, as well as his beila of Laachar Gimel. Now the question is, Amris Mezel Azli Asu, if the the um, the truth of the matter is that there is besulim, but they go and come hide dam besulim who. So even before three years old, her besulim would produce dam when damaged because they're there. They're not there to the extent that they um, they get removed completely, but they're there to a certain extent that when they do get damaged, they produce dam. Elai amrus itzudi hudalai mitzudi ad lachagimel according to the tzad that the besulim aren't really fully present until much later. Hi dam nidahu. It can't be that the dam that she experienced before Sholesh was originating in the Psalm since they're not fully developed. The fact that there was dam is an indication of dam, nida, and she is tummy. So we have a clear, solid nafkimina between the two tzadim. He found dam when he was bail kaidem gimel. If the Psalm are not fully, de- are the, according to the tzad, that the Psalm are not fully developed and don't produce dam, evidently this is dam, nida. According to the other tzad, that there are Psalm, but and they do get damaged, and they do produce dam, but they have the ability to come back. So in this case, we can rightfully assume that the dam was dam besulim, and she is tar. Maya, so what is the halacha? What is the conclusion on this shaila? Amr of chiza tashma. Pachis mekan, it said in the Mishnah, less than three years old, kinois and etzba it's as if he poked his finger into his eye. Lomid li lemisni kinois and etzba Why does the Mishnah have to give this marshal that it is daimed, it is similar to a person poking his finger into his eye? What is the point of this analogy? Lisni pachis mekan, like klum. The mission should state very briefly, less than three years old, is not considered, does not have any significance. My love must be how Kamash Malan, the mission is informing us, a chiddush. Ma'ayin medamas, just like an eye, when you poke it, it tears. The chizaris medamas, and then it returns to its former state and will tear again the next time. Af besulin, so too by the case of the besulin, mezel azli, they go, v'asu, and they come back. So the point of this comparison is to teach us this very, uh, this very halacha, that the psulim of an issue is less than three, they're there, they can produce them, but they can re- return to their former state even after they were removed. So in the case that we mentioned earlier, when there was a bi'ila, kaidim gimel, which produced dam, we can certainly assume that this dam was dam basum. So let's make a quick review of the Gemara. Aisha, who is less than three years old, does not have a din of my sabia. The Gemara has a shayla. What does that mean? Does that mean that the psulim aren't there to the extent that they will not get damaged by the my sabia? Oh yes, they're there, but they can go and come back a bit later. And the nafkamina is whether in a case where he was bail when she was less than three years old and he did find dam, can we assume that the dam is dam basulim or not? According to the tzad, that the basulim are there, they are developed, and they do produce dam. However, they can go, they have the ability to go and to regrow. So in this case, we can rightfully assume that the dam is coming from the dam basulim. However, according to the tzad, that the basulim are not fully developed, it's suited limitsid, meaning that the maizabi will not damage those basulim since they're not fully present, and therefore we have no reason to attribute the dam to Basulim, and she is Anita. So, there was a woman named Yustini, she's a granddaughter of Antoninus, who we all know was an acquaintance of Rebbe. She boss of Rebbe, they had tremendous respect for him, and she came to ask him a shayla. Amr lay Rebbe, isha bekamenesis, what is the minimal age for marriage? Amr lo bas gimel shonim yamechad, like we know in the Torah, it is three years and a day. What is the minimal age for becoming pregnant? You need to have 12 years and a day, you need to be 12 years old to conceive. So she challenged him, she told him, I married when I was six, and I actually gave birth a year later when I was seven years old. According to what you're telling me, that the minimal age requirement for marriage is three, why did I wait till I was six? I lost three years of potential marriage in my father's home. So this was the end of this story. How do we know, how is that possible? What she's saying that she was in this Abra, she conceived when she was, and she gave birth when she was seven. Omibi Abra, is that so? There are three women that need to insert an absorbent cloth 
into the Mokam Tashmish in order to absorb the Zerah, so to prevent her from becoming Mis'aber. What are the three Nashim? Ktano, Mu'uberes, Umenika. These are three Nashim that it is, there is, it is, there is a, a, a danger, there is a, um, a, a very um, uh, important uh, need to prevent her from becoming a Mu'uberes, and therefore she needs to prevent that. Why is that so? Something more like this. Let's go through the list. Ktana, Shematis Aver Vitamus. If she conceives, she may die, therefore it is Sakana, and she must prevent that. Mu'uberes, if she is expecting, Shematase Ubara Sandal. When an Isha is Mu'uberes, and then she conceives again, there is a danger to the first fetus. The second conception could um, cause that the, 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 uh, the um, latecomer will actually damage, will crush the first uh, Ubar and make him into a sandal, which is a term used for a crushed piece of um, flesh, meaning that he will damage the first child and therefore it's a sakana for him. So here it's not a sakana for the Isha, but rather for the, for the, for the uh, Ubar. What is the third case? Menika, someone who is nursing, she too needs to prevent herself from conceiving. Shema tigmal es v'yamus. Because when Isha becomes Mubaris, her milk uh, becomes not so suitable for nursing, and therefore she will have to wean uh, the nursing child away uh, and stop nursing him. And it is, uh, I guess, unhealthy for the child to stop nursing. Therefore, she needs to uh, insert a, a cloth and prevent herself from becoming Mubaris. Continues the Gemara, the Ezohiktana, what is the Iktana? That we're speaking about. What age are we speaking about? We are, we are speaking strictly about a, a time frame from 11 to 12, meaning the year from 11 a day until 12 in a day when she is what we call 11 years old. That is the time period that we're concerned here, and that is the case that the Brisa mentions regarding a Tana needing to put a Moich Ba'isai um, Moke. Why is that so? Why are we speaking about such a narrow window? Less than 11 or, or past 12, it's not a problem. Why is that so? Because under 11, there is no possibility of becoming Mu'uberis. Therefore, the, the Tashmish doesn't pose any danger. And after 12, she's already mature enough to conceive and to give birth properly. Divrei Rameya. These are the words of Rameya. All these cases, an ordinary woman, Aktana, Omuberes, Omenika, Meshameshes, Kedar, Kavoylechas, they're Meshamesh in ordinary fashion. Omen Hashamayim, Yirachmo. Hashem will have Rachmanes Adem. Shanemar, Shemer, Pesayim Hashem. Hashem watches those that are simple. The Chachamim maintain that it is not a strong enough, it is not a immediate enough risk to um, obligate or to permit her from putting a Mayich Wa'isa Makim to prevent conception, but rather she should continue living in a normal manner and Hashem will watch over her. It's very interesting, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein asks Ashayla, how is it possible that the Chachamim should suggest that a person should put himself in a Sakana, in a danger, whether it's for herself or for her Ubar, and rely merely on a heavenly Rachmanus without ha having to do any um, Ishtalus to that effect. And he says a very interesting um, a novel concept that the tashmish of an ishli ishta is an obligation. It's an integral obligation of the marriage and therefore being that this is a um, accepted ordinary, accepted normal um, behavior, it's nothing abnormal about this. Quite the contrary, this is a, a very integral part of the chiyuvim of ishli ishta and um, we're dealing with a remote risk, we're not dealing with something which is absolute. Therefore, the Chachamim maintain that the concept of Shem Yipsayim Hashem will apply in this case. I've heard a similar concept regarding driving in a car. We all know the danger involved in um, car driving. However, since it is, it is acceptable uh, behavior, it is nothing abnormal, dangerous, uh, considered dangerous. It is a uh, regular mode of life. So although it does carry with it some sort of related risk, the concept of Shem Reb Hashem will apply since it is a necessary and accepted um, behavior for a person to uh, go about doing his daily uh, business. Zok the Gemara Vaiter. if you recall, we just had a kasha because the Gemara before said that the um, 
Bitoi, the granddaughter of Antoninus, came to Rebbe and she told him that I was in Sabra when I was young, when I was merely seven years old. And we have a contradiction from the Brisa, which states very clearly that the only um, possibility of Iber is when she turns 11. Before that, there is no um, phenomenon of becoming a Sabra. That would seem to contradict the story of um, Justina. So, one teretz, Iboyaseima, Shabsar Chaim, Chamoyrim Besarim. They have flesh of a donkey, meaning you can't bring a proof from a guy. A guy's um, body works differently. They have a, a totally different system. And therefore, we can't compare it to the halachas of Torah, which pertains to Yisrael. Iboyaseima, Asher PM, Diver Shav. Their mouth speaks false. Of Yiminam, you mean Shaker. And their hand is a, is a hand of Shaker. Meaning that we can't take anything a guy says f- at face value. We simply don't believe that that's what happened. We maintain that the halacha said in the Torah remains intact, that unless she is 11 years old, there is no Ibor going to take place. So in conclusion, the Gemara gives us the um, Chiddush here about the Noshim that Amisham Sheis B'Mayich, according to Rav Meir. The coin to Chachamim, there is no such halacha, but rather... Shomer B'Sayim Hashem and the Gemara concludes that of course the Halacha mentioned, that Rebbe mentioned earlier holds true that an Isha until she's 11 will not become Nisabar on 11 and on she will but for that year between 11 and 12 there is an inherent danger for the Isha for her to become Nisabar and after that, past that period she can become Nisabar and give birth in a healthy manner Tanara Bonam, Zakti Brais, Ma Sabi Isha Achas there was a story of an Isha Shabbos of near Akiva. She pushed her Akiva. Amrlo, she told him, Rabbi Nev Alti Betech Shali Shanim Ma Ani Lekuhuna. I had Znus before I turned three years old. And Texas explains we're speaking about a fellow who was a puzzle, for instance, a Mamzer, etc. He puzzled her and he was Baaleha. The question is whether she becomes unfit, unfit for, for Kuhuna. Amrlo, Ksherat Lekuhuna, being that you were so young. There is no psul, and you're still kosher for kahuna. Amra loy, so she told him, Rabbi, em shulcha moshul. Let me give you a moshul. Lema hadover daima. For what, what is my experience similar to? Latinaik shetamna loy etzboi bedvash. A child whose finger was dipped into honey. Pa'am rishayinu shniya. When you do it to him once or twice, goyabem. He, he uh, protests. What are you doing to my finger? What is this sticky substance here? Shlishis, you do it a third time, he gets accustomed to it, and he um, starts exploring. Matzatzah, he will suck it, and it will taste very good. He'll be very pleased with the honey on his finger. So therefore, in this case, she was saying to Rebbe, um, I, I've experienced, I have had a, a very extensive experience with Znus. Does that change my status? Amrlaim came sulat lagahuna. If so, if that is, that is the case, then indeed, you are puzzled for a kain. Ra Talmidim Mustachlin Zabazet. Rakiva noticed that Talmidim were looking at each other with a puzzled expression. Amr Lahem. He told them, Lama Dover Koshabay Nechem. Why are you so surprised? Is there something wrong with what I said? That the Isha who had extensive Znus experience is puzzle Kuna? Amr Lai Kashem Shekala Torah Lachal Mashim Sinai. Just like the whole Torah in its entirety was presented to Moshe. At Sinai, Kach, so too, this halacha that we're learning today, the halacha, that an Isha who is less than three years old, who has Nus, it does not constitute a proper Maisabi, and therefore, halacha is Sinai, the halacha is that she is kosher, she remains kosher. So why then, Rebbe, did you rule otherwise? And for the Gemara, Vafra Rakiva, Loy Amra, the only reason Rabbi Kiva said what he said, he didn't mean it seriously. Truth, of course, the truth is that she remains kosher lakuna since she was less than three years old. The reason why he said it, Ella only lechada deba satamidim. He wanted to gauge their reaction. He challenged them to sharpen their minds, and that was his whole intention. Of course, the halacha uh, remains that Aisha, who is less than three years old, will not have bia, will not have the status of a ma'isa bia, and therefore, even if she was nival to apostola, she remains kosher to Kahuna. So let's recap our sugya. 
the uh, halacha of a bia by isha less than three years old does not constitute a ma'isa bia, and has many um, uh, uh, a whole list of ramifications that the Mishnah mentioned. The Gemara today went into that. Let's understand what that means. Her psulim aren't fully developed, but does that mean they're still present and they will produce dam? And that was the conclusion of the Gemara. The fact that the Mishnah brings a mashal of a person poking his finger into his eye, evidently something happens, but it can restore itself to its former state. It does produce dam. However, it will regroup and come back after when she's three years old. And therefore, the dam that was present during the Be'ilah Kaidim Gimel certainly could it be attributed to the Psulim and are considered Dam Psulim and she is tar. Then we went on to a sugya of a Muberes. What is the minimal age requirement for Muberes? The Gemara said she needs to be at least 11 years old. However, in that year, the 11th year, there is a Sakana for her to become this Aber. It is only once she hits 12 that, can sh- that she can become this Aber and give birth properly. There was a Machlegi to Ramey and Rabbanon. What is one to do? During, when, during a period when it is dangerous for a person to become pregnant. According to Rameir, there needs to be done, uh, needs some preventative action to be done. According to Chachamim, that is not ser- necessary since it is only a minor chashash. Zokti Gemara Vaiter. Ben teisha shanam v'yaymechot shabal yivimtoi. Now this Mishnah sort of parallels the previous Mishnah. What is the minimum age requirement by a ben, by a boy, for his ma'isabiyah to be considered alachik ma'isabiyah? He needs to be at least nine day, nine years and a day, meaning, meaning nine years old. So Ben Teisha Shanav Yaimechot Shabal Yivimtai. If he did Bila with his Yivama, that is a person who was Nifter, left no children. His wife is Yivama and requires the mitzvah to be done. Uh, a mitzvah of Yivam needs to be done by a brother. If the brother is merely nine years old, he can uh, acquire this isha through Bia. However, since he's only a katan, he cannot be megarisha with get until he would grow up, become a gadol, and then he has the power to issue a get. Now Rashi explains the reason for this is that although he was kind of the Yivama, but since the, the zika, the bond of the Yivama, the obligation for Yivam stems from his brother's nisun, it is the marriage of his dead brother that is bringing about the mitzvah Yivam, so the Nesuim of the young brother of the Ben Teisha Shanam is sort of a carryover. It is a completion of the Nesuim of the brother who was a Gadol. And that Nesuim was a Nesuim in Atayra. That was a proper marriage since he was a Gadol. However, this Katan who is merely nine years old does not have that power. There's a Machlekes in Rishonim, whether, this is, uh, whether he has the power of Midaraisa or Midarabonam to be Miyabe Manisha. However, it is still not as powerful as his brother's Nesum. And therefore, even though he's being Miyabe Ma, he cannot give a get, means he can't um, potter her from her bond until he becomes a Gadol, and then he has the power to issue a get. Umetame Benida. If he is Bail Isha who is Tame Nida, he will be Metame, he will become Tame to the extent that he's Metame Mishkav Tachten Ke Elyon, he's Metame what he sits on, Upoisel Be'enoi Machel Betruma. And he can passel, he can disqualify an Isha if he is Baal, provided that he is one of those individuals who passels an Isha from, um, from Truma, for or Kahuna. Rashi brings a list of a of a kusi, a mamzer. Uh, yesterday, Rashi discussed even a, a, a goy or an eved. In any case, we're speaking about specific individuals that if they are born isha, they are passing her, they disqualify her from kuhuna. Ve'enoi machel betruma, and a, a, a ben who is only nine years old, he doesn't have the power to feed his wife truma to enable her to eat truma even though he's a Kayan, and we mentioned earlier that he is Vimiyabah her to the fact that he is Kayinah her, but it is not a complete Kenyan, and he cannot be, um, he does not enable her to eat Truma. If he does this with the Behema, he disqualifies it from the Mizbeach, and the Behema gets Skila on his account. One final halacha, Vimboal Achas Mekola Arayas Hamush Petera, if he does znos with any of those arayas, mumsen al yadai, since they are gedolim, they get misa. 
However, since he is still a cotton, true he's nine years old and he does possess the ability to do a Maisabiya, but since he's under a mitzvah, he will be potter. Fertig Marakasha. We've mentioned in the beginning of the Mishnah that a Bentesha Shonim can be Miyabem a Yavama. He is Kaina the Yavama. However, regarding a get, he needs to wait until he's a Gadol and he has the Kayach to give her a proper get. Um, is it really sufficient to give her a get? We've learned Osu Bias Bentes. The Chachamim gave the the Maisabiyah of a Bentes the same status of Kemamar Begodel. Now we know Yivama has a choice. Either you do Yibam or you do Chalitza. There is no possibility, there's no option of Kedushin, like by an ordinary Isha of Kesef giving her some money, Shtar writing a document, or Bia. A Yivama is strictly Neskadesh, Nesyabim through Bia. However, the Chachamim said that if a person goes ahead and is Mekadesh Yivama with Kesef or Shtar, that does accomplish something. It is a minimal kinyan called mamar, which does not absolve her from her mitzvah zibum. It's still required to be miyabim her, to be bala. However, it does something. It, it makes a partial kinyan. So the Gemara goes ahead and says that Chacham equated a bia of a cotton ben tes to the din of mamar. It is not a proper, complete kinyan, but merely has a status of a partial kinyan, dumya, similar to mamar. Ma mamar, just like mamar begodel. If a godel does mamar to a yevama, tzarech get l'mamari. He's required to issue a get to address the mamar, which is similar to a Kenyan condition, which needs a get. The chalitza is the cause, however, she is not absolved completely. She still needs chalitza to be done. Why is that? Since the mamar did not accomplish the full mitzvah sivam, she's still somewhat of a yevama, she's a partial yevama, and midaraisa, she still needs chalitza. Since Midaraisa, nothing was done. So too, in this case, Av Bias Bentes, Tzorach Get Lamamor Vechalitza Lizikasai. The Bia of Bentes has the same status, and therefore would still require a Chalitza, since it doesn't constitute a full fledged Maise Yibum. So, why does the Mishnah state that when he grows up, he gives her a get and she's Potter? You would still need an additional Chalitza to be done. Amarav, Hochekam, this is what the Mishnah means to say, when he grows up and he becomes a Gadol, and then he does Bia. Now, since he's already a Gadol, so the Bia is a proper Masa Bia, and this, it's considered a full fledged Masa Yibum, and he's completely kind of her to the extent that she doesn't need Chalitza anymore. Why would she require Chalitza once she's in Nisyabim? If at this point he wants to be Megarisha, he will give her a get. Now we know that a ben or a bas, once they reach bar mitzvah, which is 12 years old by a bas and 13 by a ben, are considered full-fledged adults regarding the halachas of the Torah. Under that age, they are considered tanim, and generally their maizim have no, the, their, the things that they do, have no carry, no halachic significance. There is one exception to the rule, which is regarding the dorim, regarding being able to make a vow, regarding being, being magd or something, and taking truma. The Torah is mechadish to us, that within a year of godless, meaning the year that's immediately preceding their bar mitzvah, they do have the ability to do these things, provided they understand, they recognize the consequence of what they're doing. Dr. Mishnah, when she turns 11 years old, meaning it is the year which is preceding her bas mitzvah, we check, we examine her nadarim, and we see whether she understands what she's doing, and then they will have a halachic significance of a ma'is and and will be binding. Once she turns bas mitzvah, she's 12 years old, her um take hold, and they, um, they do not require any further b'dika. We baidik for the, fir, the full 12th year, meaning what we said before, that once she turns 11 and a day, we're baidik. That goes on for the entire year, and the Gemara will explain exactly what this is referring to. Continues the Mishnah, the same halacha regarding a ben. Ben shteim esrei shon of yoyimechad, nidarim nivdakin. Within a year of his godless, which is when he turns 12, his nidarim on nivdak. We examine his intention. Ben yud gimel shon of yoyimechad, once he turns bar mitzvah, nidarim kayamin. We need to examine the full 13th year, meaning the halacha, that with Boydik, when he's 12 years old, goes on for the full entire year. Again, the Gemara will explain exactly the meaning of this phrase. 
continues the Mishnah, before this period, meaning before 11 by your bas, before 12 by your ben, even if they say, they state, they announce, we understand what we're doing, we know exactly in whose name we were neither, what the significance of what we're doing is, it's halach and the Torah, we're, we're following Hashem's um, um, halachas, we understand exactly what we're doing, ain't a dream, neder, ain't a gdash and hegdash, the neder nor the hegdash do not take effect. La'achar zman after this time, meaning once they become bar mitzvah, avo bishamru ain't on yoidim, l'shemi nordarni, even if they say, we don't understand what we're doing, l'shemi yigdashnu, nidra neder, hegdash and hegdash. It is not dependent on that, Her, their, their words um, carry a power and take effect, regardless of their intention. So again, a summary of the halachas of the Mishnah, there are three periods in, the, in, in, their, in their life, there are three different categories. When they're ktanim, up until a year before their bar mitzvah, their words have no meaning whatsoever. During the year which is immediately preceding their bar mitzvah, that has a potential, a potential that carries a potential power of nether, provided they understand what they're doing. And after that, regardless of their intentions, their words do carry full weight as a gadol. The Gemara is going to analyze the phrases in the Mishnah. If we look back in the Mishnah, we have basically, um, by the Bas, we have three parts. We have the Halacha of 11 years old, which requires Badika. 12 years old, there's no Badika. And the Mishnah concludes that we are Badik the full 12th year. Once we already set, in the opening sta- statement of the Mishnah, that once she turns 11, you are boidik, isn't it obvious, isn't it obvious that, after that, past that year, her nadarim take hold, fully take hold, without any need to be boidik. So why does the Mishnah have to go ahead and explain that to us? Lomali, why does the Mishnah have to go add that? And for the Gemara, Salka, Dayta Chamina, I would think, boidikin lo'ilam, that the halacha, which is stated in the beginning of the Mishnah, you need to be boidik, that goes on forever. It begins when she turns 11. But that continues forever. You always have to make sure to ascertain that they had the proper intentions. Kamash Malon, the Mishnah informs us that's not so. This halacha is only applied to that year only. Once they hit Bar Mitzvah, there is no need, no chiv to be baitik. And once you've stated the second clause, that once they turn Bar Mitzvah, the Nidar Makayam, if so, why do you need a third clause? Baitkin Koshtem Esrei Lamali. Why is it required to go ahead and state that there is a Chiv Badika on the full 12th year? Isn't it pretty obvious? We just said that when she turns 11, you need to be Baidik. Why do you need to repeat that again? I would think to say, Since there's a Shita which says, 30 days in a year have a significance of a year. So in a case where, Suppose she turned 11 and she made another, and we examine for the first 30 days, she didn't really understand what's coming off. She didn't know how to articulate. She didn't understand what she was doing. Ehima, I would think to say, You don't need to carry on being baitik for the rest of the year. 30 days is a determination for the rest of the year. Once you've established that she doesn't understand what she's doing, the 30 days um, carry a significance of a full year, and the rest of the year she is um, excluded from doing an other. Kamash Malan, the mission informs us, no, you need to constantly be baitik the whole year, perhaps in the middle of the year, she um, got wiser and smarter, and therefore her nether will be chal now. You have to constantly check on the situation. So to conclude, we have three clauses in the Mishnah. The first statement is, 11 years old in a day, you are boidik in a dorm. Next statement is, 12 years old in a day, you don't need to make pedika. And the third and final clause is, that you need to be boidik the full entire 12th year. Frakti Gemara, why is it necessary to list all these halachas? Look, once you know, the second one and the third one, you already know the first one. Once you know that Bas Mitzvah is a full-fledged G'dayla and do, doesn't require Bedika, and then you go ahead and add to that that there is Bedika required during the full year preceding that, so you already know the Halacha that there is a Bedika in the year preceding Bas Mitzvah. In fact, you can listen to Hani Tarti Bavi. Let it say just the last two things. Bas Yud Beish Shonav Yamecha and Dara Kayamen. That's clause number two. And clause number three, you both can call Yud Beis. Why do you need to add the first Halacha? Why then does the Mishnah have to add the first halacha? Isn't it included in the subsequent halachas? And for the Gemara, it's it is necessary. I would think, the typical situation is that when she's 11 in a day, 
you need to do a bedika. Before that, a bedika is not required. We don't take anything into account. We don't give his words any significance. But perhaps there would be an exception in the following case. We see that that she is exceptionally wise. Perhaps in that case, even prior to the age, even when she's under 11 a day, you would give her word significance and you would be baidik in order to validate her nether. Kamash Malon. That's why the Mishnah has to start off with a statement 11 and a day and the Rayan of Dok, meaning anything before that, regardless of her intelligence level, does not constitute a nether. Continues the Gemara. Why does the Mishnah have to add afterwards? Before this time, meaning under 11, or past bar bas, mitzvah, bar bas Mitzvah, have their own halachas. Meaning, you're not boidik. Even if they don't understand what they're doing, it doesn't matter. Once you're Bar Bas Mitzvah, you're Nadarim Akayim. When you're younger than 11, even if you do understand what you're doing, the Nadarim have no significance. Why is this necessary? Isn't it already included in the first part of the mission? We know this already. Sagadai de I would think, Hanamil, that's only Hechad Leikam Inu. When they're not initiating, when the child is not coming to us and telling us, look, I understand what's going on, I'm intelligent, I'm smart. Or in the reverse, the Godel is not coming to tell us, look, I don't understand what's going on. He's not volunteering that information. So then the um, yardstick of the Mishnah will apply. However, but if they would go ahead and, and volunteer that information to us. For instance, an eight-year-old comes and says, you know, I understand exactly what's happening. Perhaps that would be an exception. Or in the reverse, if a Godel will come and say, look, I don't understand anything what's going on here. Perhaps that would be different and his Nadarim would not carry any significance. Kamash Ma'alon, Mishnah teaches us that it's not so, that these dinim are absolute and apply to all cases. Talking more about the Tanu Rabban, Elu Diver Rebbe. These ages, these numbers, belong to the Shittas Rebbe, who holds that a Ktana becomes Bas Mitzvah when she's 12, and a Katan waits another year. Rav Shimon Ralazu Eimer, Devar Ma'amurim Betinaikas Betinak Amurim. Shimon Ralazu holds just the opposite that a cotton becomes bar mitzvah when he's 12 and a ktana when she is 13. So this, these numbers that we mentioned by a tinaik is by a girl, really they apply to tinaik, betinaik amurim. Dvarim amurim betinaik, the age that was applied to a tinaik, which is 13, betinaik is amurim, really should be applied to a tinaik. So our very interesting machleik is, what is the age of bar mitzvah? Coin to Rebbe, a girl at 12, a boy at 13, coin to Rebbe Shem Ralaza, it's just the opposite. And of course Rebbe uh, Tesis points out that the Allah is like Rebbe, we paskin, a girl at 12 and a boy at 13. Omar of Chizna, my time with Rebbe, what is the Svara of Rebbe? That a girl precedes a boy by a year. The Chsiv, Vayiven, Hashem, Lekemes, Atzela. Hashem built the side, Mala, and he created Chava. Mala made, we learn from the word Vayiven, Shanas, Nakalish, Varcha, Bina, Yisei, Rabbi, Isha, Yoyisei, Rabbi, Isha. Hashem inserted and planted, um, added intelligence to an Isha more than by an Ish. Taisa Rosh means, says that this means that her Bina Yisei, her intelligence, arrives earlier than an Ish. I've seen other um, Farshan who say that an Isha actually has a higher level of intelligence in the long term as well. An Ish has an advantage that he has wisdom. Wisdom is generally acquired through knowledge. That is the Mila, that is the um, nature of an Ish who acquires, who studies, and he becomes a Chacham. However, an Isha's a unique um, quality is the Indian of Bina, that she has intuition, she has intelligence, and in that respect, she has a Maila, she has an advantage over an Ish, and therefore that comes earlier, because, in because uh, wisdom, that requires acquisition, requires study, learning, it takes more time, and therefore will take another, takes longer to reach that point, and uh, his Galus only arrives a year later. So that is the reason for Rebbe saying that Akhtana Abbas is at 12, and Aben is at 13. V'idach, what does Rav Shimon Raleza do with this pasuk? Ahomi bayi leik l'shlagish. We need for shlagish. Don't shlagish. Rav Shimon Nasya. Vayiven Hashem lekimas hatzela shlagach min adam leisha. Vayivyeha el adam. Hashem took the tzela that he took from the adam and created an isha and brought him back to brought her back to adam rishon. We learn from here. Malamed shekal akalish varchol lechava. Hashem braided her, braided her hair. Vayivya etzel adam. He beautified her to bring her to adam rishon. Shekain bekar chayam in some cities. Um, by the ocean, in the Kalisa Binyasa. They call uh, braiding with the term Binyasa. So it's referring to Hashem's beautification of Chava. my time. What is the reason for Shimon Rolaza Shita that a Katan, that a Ben, reaches adulthood faster than a Katana? Since he is found by his Rebbe and he studies and he learns, according to Taisvis, even if he doesn't have a Rebbe, but he 
um, go, goes in and out, he exposes himself more than an Isha. Nechnes is by our mumis tchila, um, wisdom and sharpness enters his enters uh, enters him earlier than by an Isha, and therefore his das is completed earlier, and he is bar mitzvah when he is twelve years old. Zoch to Gemara. Iboy lehu the bnei yeshiva had a shaila. We know that prior to eleven she's a ktana, past twelve she's a gdoila. Now, a gedoyle depends on two things, shonim and semanim. There needs to grow two pubic hairs in order to combine with the shonim to make her into a gedoyle. However, during the 11th year, meaning when she's 11 and a day, that is called teich zman. That is a zman, like we said before, that the nadarim are nidduk. It's like an interim, it's an in-between period between katnos and gadlus. So what is the status of the teich zman within this zman? Is it Khilifne Zman or Khilachazman? Does it have the din of um, the time before? The Lifne Zman is considered like the Katnus, or is the Khilachazman is considered like the time following, the time of Godless? Now, what are we speaking about? So, what is the discussion about? If we're speaking about the Allah of Nadarim, and we know that uh, an Isha Abbas who is 11, meaning during the, that year of Teichazman, it is simply dependent on Badika. If she understands, fine. If she does not understand who she, what she's doing, then it is not a nether. And regardless of whether she has Cyrus or not, even if she's really a Ketana, the nether will have the halachic status of a nether depending on her ability to express and to understand what she's doing. Ilan a Dharam, if the halacha here is regarding the Dharam, then what is the Shaila? It has a status of its own. It's a period on its own. This year has its own halachic status. It depends on Badika. It is not connected to the time before, nor to the time after. Ella, we're speaking about Lo'enshin. We're speaking about punishing, meaning is he obligated like a gadol? Meaning, if he, is, uh, he or she is a year before their um, adulthood age, meaning uh, uh, 11 year old for Abbas, and she has Shtei Cyrus as well, is this considered like Shtei Cyrus of Agdoila? So it is considered as if she is a G'dayla already. Since her Cyrus arrived early, she has now already the din of a G'dayla and she is obligated and will receive punishment like a mature adult. Or perhaps not. They both hold Within this time, has the din of Lefneizman. She's considered a Ketana. She's considered like a G'dayla. There's a simon in the Pasuk with Zoyz Lefnei Yisrael. This was um, done earlier by Yidin, and the Ram, as Rashi explains, is that the Torah puts the word of Azais, which denotes a Lush in the Keva, which is similar to Chanina, who is a, a name sounding like a Lush in the Keva. Lefanim earlier, meaning Rav Chanina, um, Shita, Rav Chanina Shita, who holds that Tehzman is Lefanim as early as the Din of Lefnei Azman. Most Rav Amnuna, it says in the Mishnah, Achar Zman after this time period, after they become full fledged Doilim, Achar Bishamr, Einon Yoydin, Lishnei Minodarnu, Lishnei Migdashnu, Nidayim Neder, Vigdashim Hegdish. We don't have to need to check, regardless of whether they understand or don't understand what they're doing, their Neder and their Hegdish is Chal. So let's make a Diak. That's only after the time, after they became Doilim. Ha Techzman. But if it's still within this time, meaning it's still prior to Godless, the year preceding Godless, Lefneizman will have a din of Lefneizman and they are Ketanim. So we have a raya to the Shita of Teichzman, Lefneizman. Amalei Rava. So Rava responded, you're making a diik from those words in the Mishnah. You can make an opposite diik from the other words. Emeresha, go back a step. Koidim, the Mishnah says Koidim Azman, before this time period, meaning when they are just Ketanim, then they're before 11. By Yaktana, they're full fleshed Tanam, Ava Bisha Amri Yoidimanu, Lashemi Nadarno, Shemi Dashno, Ain't a Dame Nadab, Ain't a Dash and Hagdash, doesn't mean anything, it's meaningless. So let's make a Diak. That's difficult because they're full fleshed Tanam. They're before the year that is preceding their godless. But you can make a Diak. It would, say, it would sound from here, it implies, Ha Taichzman, Kalachazman. If they would be standing by that year of um, uh, the year that is close to godless, that would have a Din of Lachazman. So you have a conflicting Diak in the Mishnah. One part of the Mishnah seems to imply that Teichzman, within this time period, there is already a din of Lacharzman, and one, pa- one part of the Mishnah seems to imply the opposite. So you can't be Medayik from the Mishnah. It's not so. Rava Katai. Rava mistakenly thought that Rav Amnuna was making a diuk from the extra words, from the superfluous part of the Mishnah. Why did the Mishnah have to say Lacharzman um, has a din, a full fledged din of another in English? 
Evidently, Mishnah is trying to teach us halacha, dafka then, but teich's man is not so. Rabbi Katoi, he made a mistake. Savar of Amnuna, my Mishnah is Sarah Kadaik. Amnuna was coming to be Madaik from the extra words of the Mishnah. That apparently Mishnah is coming to teach us halacha. And therefore he asked, Vada Daik Misay for Lidik Marisha. Just like you made a dik from the last part of the Mishnah, make a dik from the first statement of the Mishnah, part of the sentence. But like, it's not so. Rav Amnuna Megufa the Masnitsin Kadaik. Rav Amnuna was being Madaik, was inferring from the words, from the actual text of the Mishnah. Why? Because the Mishnah says, Zman, he is a full fledged dodo. Evidently, we're speaking about that he brought Shay Cyrus, that he has two Cyrus which together with the Shonim combined to make him a Tagadol. Let's see inside. What are we speaking about? If he has no Shtei Saris, Years alone, Shonim alone, the fact that he reached age 12 by Ektano or 30 by Ektano, will not constitute Godless. You need to have Shtei Saris. It must be the Aisi Shtei Saris. It's speaking about that he already has two Saris. And combined with the fact that he's already a Godel in Shonim, she's already 12 years old, including the Saris. Therefore, there is a din of Laachazman, where their nether and, and hegdish have a full significance. But Taima, and we infer from here, the reason is why are they con- con- considered full fledged Gedolim? Laachazman, because they're already passed Bar Mitzvah, who the Garmel of Milsa, they completed what they need, they completed their full requirements. They've had, they had their, their Shtei Saris, including, and plus they have their Shanim. Hatechzman, but if you backtrack a step earlier and you go back to the year preceding their Bar Mitzvah, even though they already possess Shtei Saris, Kilif it is merely considered like pre, pre-godless and they will not have a din of a, 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 a Gadol or a Gdala. So that was Rahab Nunas Diyuk to prove that Toych the year preceding godless, does not have a din of godless, but rather is considered like Lifnei and they are merely Iktanim. So he had a right to the Machlekes and the Gemara, which is what is the status of Toych the year preceding godless, and the conclusion is that there is a implication in the Mishnah to the Shita of Toich Zman, Kilifnei Zman.